Hi, my name is John, and I'm an electromechanical engineer, and I know enough about electrical to be dangerous. This is an EcoFlow Delta 2000 Max running our cabin, and this video is to show you a massive array expansion pre-feed battery that was DIY for it. We'll get right into it. And we'll cover the outhouse pre-feed expansion battery for the EcoFlow. And we'll cover the 2400 watt array and the equipment to make all this connect up. Okay, so here we have the uh, same chicken coop. This awesome camera lady's great-grandmother had chickens in even. We have 2400 watt HQST panels. The bottom row is monocrystalline, the top row is poly, as I couldn't decide which is better. And if you look here, on the array we have them we're wired four series six parallel giving us an 83 volt 30 amp service well 33 amp sent to note on the fuses so for the array on the back uh, top rows mounted into the bottom row and then i just have senior strut and junior strut used for the framing with their brackets. It's all very stout, very clean. I have access to every single wire connection on the upper row from here very easily. Still well protected. Uh, the only downside to Unistrut and then painting Unistrut is the grounding which we'll go over. Then here I overhung the bottom row so that I have full access to all the electrical connections and ground bonding. And here you can kind of see the green wire which flows. That is a number eight THHN, and by code that has to go from the first means of disconnect in one wire, no cuts, has to bond to every single panel. Um, so a lot easier with Unistrut, but by code a lot easier with the uh, aluminum framing that you would buy typically for solar. Okay, and here as you can see we have six strings coming in to this combiner box right here goes to the uh, fire disconnect, also tags one ground rod, it's a 30 amp array, so I don't see a need for two. We'll look inside. Okay, and here we're in the PV combiner box, and on the print you can see we have 10 amp fuses. On each string there's 5.5 amp strings. Then we have reverse blocking diodes, then we have a surge protector and a 40 amp breaker. Everything's labeled on the door for the most part. These fuses simply pop out pretty simple going back into another thing this is a cheaper box off Amazon but here you have the 10 amp fuses here you have your individual reversing blocking diodes these are surge protector individual packs which do not come out easy but they are ejectable they're a one-time use and a 40 amp breaker uh, which is a din rail and is mounted upside down simply because I didn't want extra wire in here if I didn't need it and here we have very common for the array disconnect a 60 amp outdoor Siemens 250 volt DC non fused. And I had extra number 12 THHN, so I paralleled a circuit on over to the outhouse. This is code. Don't install in a big array without one of these. So then we'll go to the outhouse. Okay, so now we're in the outhouse, uh, which is an old WPA outhouse. Been here a long time. Still. Functional. We have two 24 volt, 140 amp hour BTR power Amazon batteries, which are pretty cheap, which is why they're in an outhouse. We can rebuild this easier than the cabin or the coop. The panels are HQST 100 watt. Here's a matching 60 amp HQST controller. Uh, this can handle 3600 watts. We're only putting 2400 into it at peak. There's no vents, no fans, just a big heat sink. It is gel filled. So we don't have to worry about dust and other environmental factors. It does have a temp sensor. We are going to figure out how to warm these with battery pads before winter comes, but we have time for that. You have a battery set up in series. Main breaker for the batteries. You have a 10 amp breaker going down to the uh, cabin. And then here eventually will be a full time inverter once we outgrow the eco flow. Um, I just add in, this is an absolute mess out here in the pool building, but we did run a single outlet up here just for charging uh, the EcoFlow commercial trimmer and the lawnmower, the push mower that we got, because those are great and we never had to pay for it, so that's good. Um, other batteries, Milwaukee's, etc. So, just something to think about. And then in the cabin's utility closet adjacent to the bedroom, we have 
That's a combination. It is a bad weather DC disconnect, so we don't have to go outside to physically separ separate ourselves uh, from the array and the outhouse. And there's also a voltmeter on there so we can easily check and see what the DC is running at, what the battery bank's at, without actually having to go outside. And on the inside, this disconnect also, even though there's a 10 amp breaker. In the outhouse, I like fuses. There are two 15 amp fuses. There's also a very small fuse mounted back there for this voltage readout. And so here we have the EcoFlow Max 2000, um, which is running just fine. Pulling off the batteries instead of solar, the MPP still only pulls 13.3 amps. Um, so depending on the boost voltage or float voltage of the charge controller out there, we pull anywhere from 480 up to 670 watts in, which is normally enough to keep up with us. We're typically around 300. Right now we have a crock pot running today. Um, so if that system goes down, this will just stay on its internal battery or if that runs out. And then we just have our DC coming in and then we'll show you the backside. Okay, so here you can kind of see, hopefully the fans aren't too loud. We have our DC coming in on an XT90 connector, hooking into the cabin. We do plug in. We did use a Y30 amp adapter, cut the pigtail off, and sent it into the breaker panel. And uh, we'll continue the other video from there. And then something to keep in mind are smart plugs so we can leave stuff like this air fryer that uses idle power. Don't have to worry about it, don't have to constantly wear the plug out. And then we have a break before make, which means on, off, on. Selector cam switch for a manual transfer, and that's to go back on utility if we have to. Okay, so the panel, this is what's called a split bus where the bus inside is actually physically not connected to the upper half. Treat it like two panels, sub bus and sub panel, sub bus, however. This 20 amp off utility goes out, tags this cam switch. That cam switch out there selects between the Ego's 110 and the utility 110-240. Under utility, A and B, 240 potential and uh, 120 each eco flow when it switches simply takes 110 and puts it to every breaker up there the only reason why the mini split these are unused the mini splits still on there uh, we could definitely power it but we got to get the inverter in the outhouse to get the 240 so everything in the cabin's running aside from that so that's pretty good um okay uh i don't know like i said it's my first diy youtube how to do it didn't really show you how to do it just what i did but maybe it helps. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'm probably going to get an email notification and I'll reply because not much else going on here. Really, work. No. Take care. Hit the like and subscribe button. Although I'll probably never make another one.